Hey guys, it's Emily from Novel Novels and welcome to today's video. This is my November wrap up part two. Now, as you can see, I'm filming in my bedroom. With the school holidays coming up and obviously with the rules regarding the children, I will not be filming downstairs where they can be around. I want to shut them off and I want to keep them out of it. So sorry guys, you have to see them on Instagram. But I'm going to be filming up here. I'm going to try and get as many videos in December pre-filmed before they're off. Purely because I want December to be a fun month and I want it to be about them, not about me and my channel. Because obviously I love you guys, but they come first. But to me, I'm ending December, ending November on a bit of a downer because I only read 20 books. Which to you guys is like 20, wow, that's amazing. But the last two days of the month, I, the last few days of the month, I hit a real slump. I hit a bit where I thought, I'm pushing myself, I, want, I finished all the books I wanted to read in, in December, which was great in November, I wanted to read them happier than I expected. I read a few extra books, which is fantastic, but I, didn't, I couldn't find an extra book to fit in for those last few days before I start my December books. That would be short, that would be punchy, that would be what I wanted. I had a real down on Thursday night, didn't know what to do with myself, and I spoke to a few lovely friends, the lovely Julie from The Hungry Bookworm was actually my god's end. And I thought, do you know what? No, I'm not going to put any extra books in. I'm going to finish off what I want and have a Harry Potter time. Because, you know, that's what makes me happy. So, you know, but, that, but there you go. I still read 20 books. So, guys, I did it. Yay! So, should I tell you the number of non-fiction books I read? I read six. I can't believe that. That, to me, was well over what I wanted to do. A couple of them weren't very good. Few of them were really, really good. I'm really, I am really happy with the books I've read, but December's books are, oh my God, I'm so excited. I'm filming this on the last day of the month because I'll probably be a bit naughty and start my December books a little bit early. I'm, today's the day that I'm gonna be starting to sort of get the Christmas stuff started and I'm so excited. So should I get on? Should I tell you my star ratings? Well, I'll tell you the number of ratings I got for the each sort of star rating. Not including, the, and that will include the books that I'll be showing you because obviously it would, I've, I will link wrap up part one down in my descriptions. So in total, I read two two star books this month, four three star books, eight four star, which is really good, but six five star. Now to me, that's great that I got the fives, but to me it's really weird that the five star ratings is less than the four star. But I think that is because of the nonfiction. And I find really, it's really hard to rate a non-fiction book five stars because it's so personal and I'm a bit really struggle with that. So, but you know, I did well. I'm happy with some of the books. And should I get on and talk about them? Because this is why I do the wrap up in two parts. So the first one that got the lowest rating of, the, of this sort of half of the month to me was this one. And I'm going to be controversial, call me by your name, by Andre Ackerman. Charlie's lent me this book and I wanted to like it. It was one of my extra books. I wanted to love it. I really did. But I didn't. It only got two and a half stars rating for me because I found it so hard. There was no real chapter breaks. There was a lot of crudeness in this. The trigger warning is if you want a lot of rude stuff, then it's that. It's also very raw and to me that wasn't something I was... It probably could be just the mood I'm in. I'm not really in the right frame for it. But it's about a, re a relentless summer in the Italian River area. A powerful romance blossoms between 17-year-old Elias Eli Eli Elio and his father's house guest Oliver. Unrelenting currents of obsession and fear, fascination and desire threaten to overwhelm the lovers. This is set in a different thing. It's The writing is lovely. The location descriptions are beautiful and I do like that. Elio is a bit weird. Oliver, again, to me they're a bit strange. I struggle with it. It's LGBTQ, which is good and I'm not judging anything but to me I found the writing was too raw and too, the chapter breaks was too difficult so they were the two real issues with that on that so I'm sorry guys I wanted to like that the next one was three stars which was touching distance by Rebecca Adams this is a historical fiction again I did like it in the fact that the that the description that the writing is good it had it had a bit of slow pace at times it's set in the winter of 1790, a mysterious and deadly disease strikes the unexpected town of Aberdeen. And this struck the victims are all women in the prime of their life. And they're, as they're, as they give, as, after they give birth, they die. To me as a mum, I found that bit really challenging. I found the disease was really hard. Um, there is two sort of timelines. We've got two main characters. So we've got Alec Gordon, 
his so and he's trying to find out why all these women are dying and some of the treatments he does and, and some of the things they do back then are really hard and then you've got his wife and a young daughter and their sort of history and the wife goes back into her her own past and it tries to explain why she is the way she is now that bit i found interesting but some of it was again very there was a lot of goriness in this a lot of triggers in this so be warned guys there is a lot on that and i found that really hard it's actually based on a true story which is quite good um that part is good it's hard to believe the kind of things that happened back then it's hard about this disease and about how many how many women died when they were given birth to me that is something obviously i find really challenging so that's why partly why that got a three star didn't really read the best for my mom best books for me at the moment did i this month and then the last one that's three stars is us by david nichols i am not going to pick up another david nichols book charlie gave this to me she had tabbed it up, wanting to read it, but she never read it. Now I know why. It's basically about t two characters, Douglas Peterson and his wife Connie, and she's announced that she wants to divorce him, and they go on a holiday to, with their son to try and... They almost, she, he's trying to woo her back, and it doesn't kind of work out, and that's their journey as they go over their different countries and stuff. And the, his relationship with his son was quite prominent in this, but I did struggle with it. I found it very slow pace. It was a long enough book and it was really not great. So guys, charity shop. If you hadn't guessed, two of those are going to the charity shop and one of them is going back to Charlie. But now I get to my four star ratings. My four star books were really good and they were really what I needed. Now I'm going to start off with the first one, which was an audio book, so I can't show you. But it's the five and it's the untold stories of the five victims of Jack the Ripper. By Helen Rub Helly Rubenstein, I think. I don't know her name exact name it was amazing charlie told me to get it on the library app she basically put the push the button and pre-ordered it for me it was amazing it was probably my to me it's a very close second on my favorite non-fiction book of this month because it really tells the true stories of those five victims and all we hear about is jack the ripper and his and it's almost like he's sensationalized he's like a legend because of the way the mystery behind him but we never looked really, I never knew anything about the women that he killed. It was all assumed they were prostitutes. And actually this story goes to investigate that there was so much more. Some of these women's lives took turns that they didn't want them to take. One was, had alcoholism and that was, I do believe alcoholism can be genetic. I'm, that was controversial, but again, I can believe that it's not always people's fault when they go down that route. And especially not, not back then when the understanding was difficult. You had the first victim who had to leave her family because she thought that was the right decision for her children. It wasn't one she wanted to make, and reading about how much she missed her children was heartbreaking. Now, there's various ones of the, those those women that I related to more. Some that I just found were a bit. They're not so much their stories were boring, but I found kind of a lot of things they did was like I just couldn't believe it. And but it was such an interesting book. Hanny Rubenstein, she she describes these ladies' stories brilliantly, and the fact that it was an audio book made it all that more interesting. I, I struggle with audiobooks sometimes, but that was probably up there in the star rate. I would say now, looking back on it, I would think it's four to four and a half stars. It's that good. But guys, check it out. Check it on your library if, if you can. Get the book, please. If you want to know more, get that. If you like historical fiction, or historical non-fiction even, get it. Brilliant. Next one, got one eight minutes already, is Our Song by Danny Atkins. I buddy read this with the lovely Charlotte from Books and Bargains. I love that girl. She is one of my newest friends. We chat, video chatted about this book. Buddy reading this with her, it started off. A lot of book buddy reads. Um, it, this is a brilliant book. The only reason it got four stars was because there was a very lot of slow pace at the start. Um, there were some bits, some days when we'd read pages and we'd go, oh, boring. There were other days when we were just like, we wanted to carry on. And I must admit, I finished it about a day or two early. She did as well, but it was because it was that good. And the end, it just, the last half just went zoom. It's about two, four people, two marriages, one fateful night to decide their past, present and future. I don't want to go into too much detail about this book because it will give up spoilers straight away. But one night you, you, you realise that two events happen to these two couples. It's the two men in this side. And when they're both, the, they arrive at the hospital, it's safe to say. And there's, there's the two families are actually connected. And it's really interesting. And this, this book is about the two ladies, the two wives and their stories. And you go backwards and forwards to their past and present and you understand why things are the way they were the connections between them it's so interesting 
it's a repeat. I cried quite a bit. Um, Charlotte cried. It was brilliant. But again, I am definitely picking up another Danny Atkins book. It will go to the charity shop because if I read, I can't reread that because it was too tearful and it will kill me. But it, it was so good. I seriously recommend everyone. I can't wait to read more about Danny Atkins' work. I think that was the second book I've read of hers. And I'm definitely going to make me want to look for more of her book. The next one was a book that Charlie lent to me. Non-fiction book. It's by Jen Campbell. The funny, weird things customers say in bookshops. It made me laugh. It was a funny, funny book. And it was just what I needed. So thank you, Charlie. Don't want to say any more than that. Title explained it. It's brilliant. Charlie, you're getting that back. Now, the next one I picked up at a charity shop near me for only about 10 to 20p, but it's brilliant. I'm sending it to Simone because she liked the sound of this. So, I hope you enjoy this, Simone. It's Tea by the Nursery Fire, a children's nanny at the, at the turn of the century. This tells the story of Emily Huckwell, who's born in the tiny Sussex village in the 1870s, and she got went into domestic service quite young. A lot of women did, but a lot of the girls did back then. And to see her being taken away from my mum was really hard. She didn't want to do it, she didn't want to go. But then she made something of herself. She starts off as an under, as a nursery maid, and then she progresses up her career, and she sort of goes with families. You see the relationship she has with the children. She sees her grow. This is probably one of the best, another non-fiction book that I loved. Um, I'm giving it to Charlotte, but I'm definitely this. The Noel Street Field has actually written quite a few um, fiction books. One of them is the Ballet Shoes. Now I'm going to look for his book, but he is at, the author is actually the the granddaughter, the grandson. No, sort of, no, it's the one of the children in her care was the father of Noel, of the author. So that's how she's connect, how he's connected to the actual Emily Huckwell, which is why it's a true story. But her story is really amazing and I really love this book. So definitely, guys. If you don't, if you like sort of wartime, pro, it's actually Victorian and Edwardian, so that's really interesting. Love that. Now the next one I've picked from, the next two I've got from the, li the library. It's a four star, but only just. I think it was four to four and a half. The Bear and the Nightingale by Catherine Arden. It scared me at points. It is, his, again, it's historical fiction. It's sort of set in the Russian fairy tales, basically about the Russian era. And it's, oh, I can't even tell you when it was, but oh my God. Most of you have heard about this. I don't need to talk about it more. It's four stars. Charlie loved it. It did take me a bit of time to get into, which is why it's four stars. But it's got magical realism. It's got historical fiction it's got magic and i love the magic side of it and i loved some of the characters some of the characters scared the bejeebas out of me but that's because i'm a wimp but i love this book yes it's four stars but it was a really high up there four stars it just oh i really did enjoy that and i'm definitely getting the next ones in the series i'm going to the library today so you never know i might try and forget that now i go into my five stars i'm only showing you three five stars because obviously the others were in the second part so i had three in both each part which Works out good. First one is the one we all know about, The Hate You Give by Angie Thomas. Everyone knows about that. Charlie lent it to me a while ago. I wanted to get down to it, and boy, am I glad I did. Star lives in, in two worlds, a poor neighbourhood where she was born and raised, and the posh, sub, posh high school in her suburbs. The uneasy balance, and then I'm not going to go, I'm not going to read the back, but it, her best friend gets shot right at the start of it, safely to say, Kalim. And you discover that people aren't always what they seem, that, pe that we put labels on people um, without really looking into them. We had, the people made assumptions about Khalil. He had that his history was kind of, everyone was making decisions about what they thought that he was like or what. And sort of like, and they made assumptions about why, what he did, what he did. And there's so much more depth. And I love the depth in this book. I love the fact that you find out people about people. I love the family aspect. I love the way that, her family, the families are disjointed, but it's still really connected really well. I felt for Star. I really wanted to wrap her up in my arms. I really felt for her because a lot of what happens in this is really hard hitting, but it's so beautifully written. And I know it was one of the top books and it's brilliant. And thank you, Charlie, for lending it to me. See, I don't always disagree with that. <laughs> then I had to read a kid to put, I can't really go into descriptions because of the children's thing, but yeah, I did pick that one up. It's, no, it's obvious why it's five stars. Then my favourite book of the month. It's a kind of close tie between that. I think I've got a favourite part book of two, the two halves. So the first half of my favourite book was Casual Vacancy. This book is The Handmaid's Tale. Now, I know from Victoria, from what Victoria read, has just read The Testament. So many people have just read that. And I thought, it's about time I got down to this. Book I picked up in a charity shop, only 20p, but the copy of it's beautiful. 
it's a historical fiction. I don't know. The, I think it's more of a classic. It's a dystopic classic, I would say. That's my genre rating for it. Everyone knows about this book. I don't need to tell you too much. The Republic of Gilead offers offered one function to breathe. If she deviates, like she will, she will, like dis dissenters, be hanged at the wall or be sent to die slowly, out, slowly of radiation sickness. This is a dystopic book about, and um, it was written in 1984, and infertility is on the rise in the Western Hemisphere. So many people are getting uh, infertile, and the world is going to lengths to create children. I think to me that's really hard. I, it makes me want to hold my children more. The fact these children have these, these women they have to give birth and they have to give the children to the wives. It's the labels we put on people. It's really hard hitting, but I really did enjoy it. I didn't think I would. I thought there were some bits were a bit gory, some bits were a bit freaky, um, and the fact that the world could easily turn out this way if we're not careful. The radiation side of it, well, let's hope that doesn't happen. And I hope that none of this happens. And I hope we can control our world to make our world a good place. I don't want my kids growing up to have to go to some of these lengths that these people would go to. I want to protect me out especially. Um, and it's really hard hitting, but it's so well written, it's beautiful. I am having a real tie between, do I get the Testaments hardback myself or do I wait for it to come out in paperback? Let me know in the comments below, guys. And if any of you know when it's going to come out in paperback, let me know because hardback books are hard to fit on my shelves and I much prefer paperback. I'm giving you a hint for another video that's coming out. But yeah, this book's brilliant. It's one of my favourite books of the month. It's getting kept. It's going on the top shelves. It's going on my keep pile, it, which means it tells you something, but it's brilliant. Like I said, November didn't end the way I wanted it to, but I'm going to start December happy and I'm going to read some good books. Currently reading a Harry Potter book to cheer me up, um, but I'm going to start with my December book a little bit early. I'm going to probably start on my Adam K book. So you guys would have seen my TBR. You know the books I've got this month. They look brilliant. I'm excited. But what books made? What books were amazing for you in November? What was your favourite book in November? I can't wait to hear. And I hope you all had a great November reading month. And that's it for today. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you're new to my channel and not subscribed yet, why? And repress on the ding -a -ling! Hope you all enjoyed this video. Take care, guys. Bye-bye.